Perfect! Fire! <laughs> yeah! I can fly! I believe I can fly! <gasps> Hi! Welcome back. We have a fourth video we need to work on and um, let's get right into it. So this evening or today or whenever you're watching this video, we're going to be handling sentences. We've done capitalization and so the next thing we're going to handle is our sentences. So we're going to deal with sentences. All right, so let's go. So a sentence is a group of words that tell a complete thought. Sentence is a group of words that tell a complete thought. I'm intentionally reading this uh, repeatedly because I want you to digest slowly, digest um, what you're hearing. A sentence is a group of words that tell a complete thought. Now let's get to explaining that. So, a group of words, anything that is not one is a group. If you have two things, you have, oh, let's just, let me, let me, let me, I want to use um, something random. Okay, let's just use the words we're, we're handling over here. It says words, let's just use words. So, I've split this sentence, not typically, but I, I've just written a couple of words over here. So, here we have, excuse me, we have coffee goes, right? Now, the, uh, these are two words over here, coffee goes, and then we have the gym every day. On this, on its own, all right, over here, we have the gym every day. I hope my kids are working so you can see where I'm pointing. Um, the gym every day. There's a group of words, uh, four words over there, the gym every day, four words. It's a group of words. However, they do not tell a complete thought. They do not make sense. We know what the means, we know what a gym is, we know what every is, and we know what D is. Four, uh, four words over there, a group of words over there, but it did not tell a complete thought. This is the, the very sim simple explanation I can give you. Over here we have Kofi goes. Kofi, average name of anybody goes. You know what that is. Don't need to explain. Now, these words on their own, as they are, Kofi goes and the gym every day, do not make any sense. They're a group of words, all right, but do not make any sense. For something to make sense, for a group of words to tell a thought, to make sense, uh, to even be able to be called a sentence, they have to make sense. Let me get that straight. Let me say that again. For a group of words to be called a sentence, or for a group of words to be able to be called a sentence, they have to tell a thought. They have to make sense when you read it or when you hear it it has to have a complete thought it has to be able to direct something it informs it has a thought process it makes sense a typical example of that is basically what I've done joining these words together all right so we have a sentence coffee goes to the gym every day this sentence tells you about an individual named Kofi who goes to the gym every day. Very simple sentence tells you a very simple thought. It makes sense. That's that's it. Very simple. All right. Now let's move on. We have various types of sentences. Kinds of sentences. It's kinds kinds of sentences. So the first one we're going to look at is a sentence that tells something ends with a period. No, we're not dealing with types of sentences, I'm dealing with kinds, all right? A sentence that tells something ends with a period. A period is also known as a full stop. A sentence that tells something ends with a period, as you can see over here. I discovered that my screen capture sometimes makes it a little blur, so I'm going to maximize, maximize? Magnify, sorry, so that you can see properly this sign. A sentence that tells something, a sentence that tells tells something, and with a period, period also known as a full stop. So what you can see here in the bracket is a period. Anything that a sentence that tells something that is we'll get to that, don't worry. I don't even want to deliberate. I'll give you a typical example that'll make you understand what is being illustrated here. Let's move on to the next. A sentence that a sentence that asks a question and oh my goodness, I'm sorry, spelling error. Oh. 
A sentence that asks a question ends with a question mark. As you can see over here, I really hope you can see because I discovered that this thing minimizes or it reduces the size of uh, the, 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 the font. So I want to hope you can all see this question mark over here. That is a question mark. A sentence that asks a question ends with a question mark. That is a question over there. Let's move on. A sentence that shows strong feelings ends with an exclamation point. A sentence that shows strong feelings ends with an exclamation point. An exclamation point is over here. I'm going to magnify that so you can all take a good look at that. Oh my goodness, it's not magnifying for some reason. Yes, this over here. What is highlighted? I don't know whether it shows when I highlight something. But that is an exclamation point. A sentence that shows strong feelings ends with an exclamation point. So I have a couple of sentences over here we're going to take a look at. I'm going to tell you which punctuation we're going to end the sentence with. So you can understand one, two, and three. Very simple. All these, all these are sentences. They, why are they sentences? Because when you read them, let us ignore the punctuations. You see none of them have punctuations over here at the end. None of them. That's because we're going to fill it together. However, however, I just want you to take a good look at these sentences. Do you want to go to the movies on Saturday? We are going to the we are going to the theater at the mall. I'm going to buy a large popcorn and a bag of candy. What do you like to eat at the movies? This movie is great. Meet me outside. Just a second. Okay. Sorry, I had to pause a little bit. Okay, so, um, yes, do you want to go to the movies on Saturday? We're going to the theater, the mall, I'm going to buy a large popcorn and a bag of candy. What do you like to eat at the movies? This movie is great. Meet me outside. These are the six sentences that I've decided to just write over here. We're going to end them with the appropriate punctuation and so that you can understand what went on up here. Now, I forgot to add this one. A sentence that gives a command ends with a period a sentence that gives a command ends with a period okay so let's move on let's just start filling these real quickly do you want to go to the movies on saturday now when you hear do you want is a request it's a question you can almost tell this sentence is this sentence is asking a question and what we have so we're going to just do something like a tick we're going to be tick boxing right so if it fails it then we apply that punctuation over there if you read the sentence and it corresponds with any of these things over here any of these kinds we're going to use that punctuation at the end of this sentence at the end of that particular sentence okay so do you want to go to the movies on saturday this is a question so it must end with a question mark so there we go i hope i put to the right space do you want to go to movies on saturday that's a question so enter the question mark oh my goodness sorry i erased that okay we are going to the theater at the mall a sentence that asks a question this is, this is not asking a question it's not showing any strong feeling it is not a command it just says we are going to the theater at the mall it is telling us that somebody is going to the theater at the mall that's it so a sentence that tells something ends with a period otherwise known as a full stop a period there we go so let's move on i'm going to buy a large popcorn and a bag of candy i'm going to buy a large popcorn and a bag of candy this is a statement it's a sentence that is telling us something and it's as a statement all right so this also ends with a period I really hope you can see because it looks let me just maximize the whole thing to an annoying degree because I'm starting to think that you people cannot see oh my goodness forgive me I'm just gonna make this as large as possible yep that's right so we've done one two and three let's move on to four what do you like to eat at the movies it's a question straight ahead and it starts with what and it's any any sentence that starts with what 
who, when, and all of that. We'll get into that. But with Methi here, all these W words, you should know immediately. It's a question. So what do you like to eat at the movies? That ends with a question mark. So let's just put our question mark over there. Simple. This movie is great. This movie is great. Now, this is a bit tricky, right? So, this is a bit tricky. This sentence, never mind that it is telling us something. Is as I said, the sentence that tells us something ends with a period. And it has to hold us something. It's just telling us that the particular movie or whatever it is, is great. However, when we use a word like great, it is a strong feeling. It is, when we say something is good, all right, that means you appreciate this, right? Like, um, 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 why do I always struggle with examples? Okay, let me use something relatable, all right? Let me use something really relatable. You guys eat at several fast food joints all over, all right? So you can be like, maybe the chicken, or, okay, okay, yep, yep, the chicken at, See, I don't know restaurant's name. Okay, a popular one. Let's just say the chicken at Papaya is good. It's good. When you use the word good for something, it's always in a positive light. So you mean it tastes good, right? It, it, it's okay. It's not something you throw away, you eat it. When you say it's great, that is a bit above. That is putting it at a level. It's a strong, it's a strong word to use when you say something is great it's above good let's just put it that way all right so there can be bad which is in the negative light you can say good that is in a positive light and you can say great that is also in a positive light but it's above good that means it is exceptional like it's, it's up there it's great so even though the sentence is telling us something it has to end with the period all right but it is also it, 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 it's, it's 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 showing a strong feeling so if you write if you maybe this movie is great or this this meal is great or this rice is great whatever it is when you use the word great you're usually using a strong word that's showing a lot of feeling so something like this i we will not put a full stop we will not put a period behind that t in front of that t what we're going to put is an exclamation point so there we go exclamation point this movie is great it's showing a strong feeling great it's a strong word next meet me outside now let's go and check all those sentences up there a sentence that tells us something into the period meet me outside uh, is it telling us something no a sentence that asks a question enter the question mark is it asking a question absolutely not meet me outside that's not a question a sentence that shows strong feelings ends with an exclamation point Meet me outside shows no strong feeling whatsoever. A sentence that gives a command ends with a period. That statement is definitely a command. Say meet me outside is a command. So that definitely ends with a period. So let's just put our period right. Period. <laughs> okay, let's move on. We'll do a recap. So if you missed anything, don't worry. Stay, stay where you are. We're just going to keep going. All right. So just follow. Let's come on to commas. We use commas to separate three or more items in series. I want to make this a little big. I don't want to font is so small. We use commas to separate. There should have been two or more items in series. I'm sorry about that. Two more items in a series. I'm not going to explain. That. I'm just going to let you just watch. You're going to understand. It's very simple. So I've got 12, 14 sentences. I didn't really know I made that many. 14 sentences over here. And we're going to put commas in the right places. Very simple. But this confuses a lot of people. People do not really understand where to attach commas. Very bad. So let's just take our time and, 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 and go through this. All right. Let me make that also big. We're going to just put all the comments in the right places. Sentence one. Benjamin is wearing all these uh, statements. So as you can see, they're ending with full stops or periods. You can see one to all of them, all of them, all of them ending. Oh, sorry. I forgot a couple of them. All of them are ending with periods. Okay. So let's move on. 
sentence one benjamin is wearing a tie coat and shoes there's not like a tie coat so observe please do not you know break your concentration this is the time where you really need to watching the video and paying a lot of attention uh, a lot of people really confuse this i would excuse me i'll never stop saying this it's not like a tie coat so we already know tie coat is not one word so a comma will be put over here to separate these two so that the sentence makes a lot more sense benjamin is wearing a tie coat and shoes you've definitely been told this in english class probably by not me but i'm sure a lot of our english teachers have told you that anytime you observe anytime there's a comma in a sentence and you're reading it you have to observe a particular course so we're not going to read a sentence like that benjamin is wearing a tie coat and shoes because there's a comma in between tie and coat we're going to observe that pause a little breast benjamin is wearing a tie coat and shoes this sentence makes complete sense you all know what tie is you all know what coat is you know what shoes are simple let's just let's, let's just keep going because these sentences are different they are not all the same it's not the same format they are different let's go two Talisa is wearing, forgive my names, but these are the names I know, so, and learn some new names, most of you. Talisa is wearing a swimsuit hat and sunglasses. Talisa is wearing a swimsuit hat and glasses. Now, I, I, I think I had to resist uh, observing the pause, even though there's no comma. It just says Talisa is wearing a swimsuit hat and glasses. When there's a comma, then that's when the pause comes. So by now you should figure out where our comma is going because it's nothing like a swimsuit hat there's a swimsuit all right things people wear to the pool and the beach and whatever and we're going to observe that so very simple a comma comes in between swimsuit oh my goodness yeah swimsuit and hat to separate the two because they're not the same and since you're talking about two different things two different items you cannot forget the comma because people need to understand a sentence. People need to understand that there's one thing and there's another thing. You cannot ignore the punctuation because then the sentence is wrong. It doesn't make sense. Now, this is what the comma is making the sentence going to sound like. Talisa is wearing a swimsuit, hat, and glass, sunglasses. Very simple. Let's just keep moving. Next sentence, Julia is shopping for pens pencils and erasers again i had to read it with a pause i'm going to try and control that because i want you to understand how the sentence will sound when there's no comma when there's no comma it's basically judah shopping for pens pencils and erasers that is, and even still i put the pause in even so i put the pause. i think what i'm going to do is this i'm going to basically like okay no i'm, I'm going to leave it that way so judah is shopping for pens pencils and erasers Let's just put the appropriate punctuation right there. Julia is shopping for pens, pencils, and erasers. They are not, they are two different items. When you are indicating, even, let, let me just keep it where it is. This is a sentence. It says Julia is shopping for pens, pencils, and erasers. Even if it says Julia is shopping for pens, pens, and pens, you still will have to put the comma there because that is how you're going to read the sentence to make sense this is all about how sentences how, what makes a group of words a sentence it's not just about it ending with the right punctuation if you write a sentence all right and you forget to put the right punctuation in the middle of the sentence it is not a sentence anymore guess what it's a group of words that makes no sense no sense at all no sense this is something a lot of people f flout it's a rule a lot of people flout and you have to pay attention okay let's move on sentence number four she selects blue pens purple pencils and green erasers i'm going to take my time and read that again she selects blue pens purple pencils and green erasers very simple let's go blue pens purple pencils and green erasers i read it again correctly i'm trying hard i want to read it incorrectly when it, it doesn't have the comma in there so you can understand how it sounds 
without the comma i don't know i'm so used to reading a sentence like that even when the comma is not there i i, I automatically correct it but it's it, it's wrong when the comma is not there it's very serious it makes a sentence wrong let's move on five men where did i come up with this name from i've never even heard it i'm sorry <laughs> men let's make it mina because i don't it doesn't make sense is sorry a little typo over there let's make it mina because i've never heard of men i don't even know why i came with that mina is taking a trip to washington oregon and california i probably should have used i probably should have used Ghanaian states because you probably haven't heard of these ones but these are all states in the united states yeah states in the united states the united states has 50 states and these are three of them all right i just selected them i don't i i probably was not paying that much attention but at least know them all right so mina is taking a trip to washington oregon and california give me a second i feel like i need to increase the light in, in this. yep okay mina is taking a trip to washington oregon and no you see i read it correctly mina is taking a trip to washington oregon and california <laughs> this is hard <laughs> taking a trip to washington oregon and california now you automatically can understand even if you didn't know what these were washington oregon and california i have capitalized um w in washington i've capitalized o in oregon i've capitalized c in california so even if you didn't know what they are i'm sure you've probably heard of washington before so most of you know it's a state you should know that oregon is also a state and california is also a state now when there are three i three items let's just say items so let's just say i'm gonna add another state okay so uh let's just say florida florida is another state in the u.s so let's just say um i'm just going to go florida this is how most of them were so don't get confused i'm just trying to illustrate something over here we've been dealing with from sentence one two three four we've been dealing with a certain kind most of them like tie coat then we separate the tie and coat swimsuit hat then we separate this i want you to understand what happens when they are four I don't know whether I put some of them down there. That's why I've just changed this. So pay attention. It's very simple. You understand it. Mina is taking a trip to Washington, Oregon, California, Florida. Now, a case like this, we have four items that we need to separate for the sentence to make sense. Mina is taking a trip. Makes sense. Two, Washington, Oregon. So now these are two. Immediately, a comma needs to come in between them. Now, this is the dangerous part. So you've been watching me deal with two and then we separate. However, these are four. So the end, we need to employ end. End will come in between to end the sentence. Hey, I'm confusing people. Hold on. End. A N D. Let me just put that somewhere. A N D will come in at the end of the sentence. End will come at the end. <laughs> end will come at the end of the sentence not the direct end it will finish the sentence so just watch we put a comma between washington and oregon now we still need to separate because there are four of them we can apply the comma as long as the last one has an end before it if you watch end shoes we've applied the comma over here but it has end before the last end before sunglasses this, this is the last why am i pointing to the screen <laughs> sunglasses this is the last we have end before sunglasses and we have erasers this is the last we have end before erasers we apply the comma knowing that the last item is going to have end in front of it so that means we keep applying the comma so if it's god knows how many states we're going to keep applying the commas until we have end before the last yeah, no, I'm confusing, but I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to break it down. So if you don't get it, no problem. Just comment and, 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 and email me whatsoever. But let's just keep, let, let's, let's just move on. Mina is taking a trip to Washington. What did I say? Washington. What? Whatever it is. Oregon. We have to separate Oregon and California. So, comma. And now we're going to bring end. I can't drag and drop. I forgot. Okay, so California and Florida. Simple end of sentence. Simple end of sentence. We bring the commas in as long as we know that at the end of the sentence, the last item is going to have end in front of it. 
at the end of the sentence the last item and we're just calling them items even though some of them have they are all items some of them have the states and stuff like that let's just let's just for for want of a better word let's just call them items we know some of them are states but let's just call them items as long as the last item has end in front of it we're going to keep applying the comments that's as long as depending on how many they are so there's been four over here four of them so we we had a comma after washington we have a comma after oregon and then california and florida these are four they could have been six right and then you keep applying the comma so the last one has end in front of it i know most of you probably might not be might not get it but i'm sure those who have been following you will be able to get it and if you get missing no problem just don't stop just keep watching and then at the end you can go back and and then watch it all over again let's keep moving so sentence number six he will pack toys clothes and books in a suitcase toys simple now we have names for a change we've been dealing with items 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 we have states or places we need items again now we have names very simple john devon and mitchell are going to the state park uh very simple all we have to do is put a comma in between john and devon simple very simple let's just keep moving mitchell makes sure to wear his helmet elbow pads and knee pads those of you like riding bicycles the proper way to ride them is always have a helmet elbow pads and knee pads is actually pretty important no it's not a lie it's not an abruptful thing it's real seriously most of you because you've been riding them so often you don't fall so you think that's going to happen to you you all you need protection seriously need protection you fall on this uh that period god knows what will happen to okay i digress let's just come back <laughs> so mitchell makes sure to wear his helmet elbow pads and knee pads there's not like a helmet elbow pad that thing you see without the comma for those of you who don't know the items you are seeing over here like maybe they say i'm sure you all know pens pencils and erasers so that was easy for you probably blue pens purple pencils green erasers that was easy for you um toys clothes books you, you all know what they are but things that you don't know i realize that it, 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 it will be a bit confusing for you no shaking i'll explain you all know what the helmet is and for those of you who watch football behind the scenes you actually see some no yes football like british football not soccer and um, wow i don't want to confuse you but it's the only sport i know that i can explain this with british football not soccer soccer is the ronaldo messi thing you all watch what i'm talking about is football british football it's a game i don't know that much about it but the little i've seen is you know they have these little sticks and it's a pretty rough game they are falling and it, it's pretty rough it's pretty rough it's, it's a rough game if you fall down you know pray because you know you're not going to be okay and so most of them wear these elbow pads i think i have some more nah, i don't i don't know I, I, but anyway they basically the the knee parts that protect the knees elbow parts to protect the elbow so if you fall the impact will not because when these the elbows and the knees are where they are joints right so if you fall on those you can easily break a joint or you can easily break a bone or something i mean depending on how heavy the fall is you can easily injure yourself so uh, uh, those are what they are you all know what helmet is so at least you know what elbow parts are this little parts of heavy material so you wear them so if you fall down at least the part will take the pressure it's not like it won't hurt but it won't hurt as much as if your raw elbow hits the ground or something like that i'm doing all this explanation so you can understand what they are so if you see them in a sentence at least you know what they are because like i said you all know pens pencils erasers you all know what uh, the toys and clothes and stuff are but when it comes to this maybe because you don't know what it is you'll probably come and put a comma in between helmet and elbow and think helmet elbow is one thing so elbow pads i've explained to you what they are so what we very simple but we're just going to put a comma in between helmets and elbow pads and knee pads let's move on skateboards inline skates and roller skates are allowed in the skate park a lot of skates in this sentence skateboards inline skates and roller skates are allowed in the skate park skates sorry <laughs> okay so skateboards you know what skateboards are inline skate i think i'll show you a picture i have to do another session where i'll show you this because they are taking a lot of time 
However, skateboards are one thing. As long as you know that you're safe, so you can put a comma right behind that. Very simple. Skateboards, inline skates, and roller skates are allowed in the skate park. Very simple. Let's move on. My parents, my sister, and I went to the symphony hall to see a concert. My parents, my sister, and I. So our comma comes between my parents and my sister. My parents, parents, one. My sister, another. So obviously, a comma needs to come here. This is not just for exercise's sake. Most of you write stories, and I normally encourage that. You write stories, you write these little stories in your books. I've seen most of you do that. It's not even that. You read stories. When you read stories, or you read magazines or newspapers, you don't see them write something like this and not put a comma there. Otherwise, you will read it wrongly. So it's important to know this is not just for exercises and homework and exam. This is for life. You need to know how to write. And one way of getting this right is obeying these little rules. So my parents, my sister, and I went to the symphony or to a concert, so come on right there. I want to hope my camera is working properly because the lighting here is pretty poor. Anyway, let's move on. 11, sentence number 11. We had violins, trumpets, cellos, pianos, and drums. There you go. Violins, one. Trumpets, two. Cellos, three. Pianos, four. Drums, five. But... Okay, so, moving on. Then we have 12. Oh. Violence, trumpets, sorry, I get to the corrected version. Mm, just a second. Okay, moving on. So, uh, over here, we have violence, trumpets, cellos, pianos, and drums. So, it's very simple. So, like I said, no matter how many they are, as long as they end with end, you are good to go. So, your job basically is to put a comma in between so that we can separate these items as they've been they've been written in a series you can see violins and trumpets and there's cellos and there's pianos it follows in a series the, the the importance of the comma here is to make sure that we keep them apart in a way that can distinguish that this is one thing this is another thing this is another thing this is another thing and the last very simple so same rule applies violins trumpets cellos pianos and drums very simple let's come to the next it was following a very simple pattern keisha sandra and travis are the bowling alley for one's birthday party very simple we separate keisha and sandra so as you read it if you respect the comma you understand that it's supposed to be a pause keisha sandra and travis are the bowling alley for one's birthday party simple so on to the next they're eating hot dogs, pizza, cake, and ice cream. As usual, comma is here to separate them so you can understand which is which. Hot dogs, comma, pizza, comma, cake, and ice cream. Hot dogs, pizza, cake, and ice cream. You can understand that there are four items that are being discussed over here. One received a yo yo. A tennis racket and a soccer ball for his birthday. A yo-yo and a tennis racket. Very simple. We've done all 14 sentences. Now let's move on to the next use of commas. Next thing we're going to learn about the use of commas is commas and dates. So let's read what we have here. Use a comma after the day in a date, but do not put a comma after the month if no day is used. Very simple. People get confused about this all the time. I'm going to try and make it simple. In a date, whatever the dates in general, there are two days. We have the day in the week itself. A Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Then we have the day in the month. That is whether it is first, second, third, twelfth. 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st. These are the days in the month itself. The days in the month. 
and there's a day of the week. So, when you write a full date like this, Tuesday 12th May 2002, the comma is brought after the day over here. If no day of the week is used like this, May 12th 2002, the comma comes after this day in the month, which is 12. Because no day of the week has been used, we do not put it at the month. We do not put it after the month, we put it after the day. A day. The day. So if you write something like this, May 2002, you will need to put any comma in there. Just May 2002. Very simple. Very, very simple. As I said, do not put a comma after the month if no day is used. That means if either a day of the week is, is not used, excuse me, or the day in the month is not used, you do not attach a comma. If it's May 2002, February 1978, uh, August 1987. If you write it just like that, just the month and then a year, please do not bring any comma here. Very simple. We use a comma between the city name and the state name when used together, like Accra, Ghana. You can't just write Accra, Ghana, like that. When you put the comma there, it distinguishes between the city name and the state name, or the region name, or the capital name, or whatever it is. Very simple. So I have a test for you right here. You read the short passage below. The punctuations have been put in the wrong places. Correct them. Very simple. I'm going to try and read it for you guys. Let me put this properly. Uh oh. Yes. My grandpa had an interest. Had a very interesting life. He was born on August 20th, 1943. He grew up in Bali, Tamale. In February 1963, he moved to Ashaman, Accra. On June 8th. 1964 He married my grandma at a church in Sampa Sunyan and my dad was born on February 1st, 1966 Your job is to correct all the punctuations that have been put in the wrong places I'm not going to tell you which ones Correct them yourselves. It's very easy actually. It's one of the easiest tests you get Okay Okay Next a dog day. You have another test. So read the story below. You put the comments, periods, question marks, and exclamation points in the correct places. Very simple, actually. Very simple. So I'm gonna read it for you, and I'm going to read. I'm going to give you like a, a kind of hint by reading it. What I'm gonna do basically is I'm going to read it as though all the punctuations have been put in their right places so if you listen very carefully you understand which goes where notice that we're not just talking about comments here this essay particular for the first one okay i'm not even going to mention anything but the what this particular essay we're dealing with the dog day what you're going to do is it's not just commas it's commas period question marks exclamation points so we did all that at the top here Remember, we did sentences that end with this, end with periods, end with question marks, exclamation points, periods, all of that. You're going to apply all of that down here. So let's go. On October 19, 2002, I went to the animal shelf. Notes. I'm reading this as do all the punctuations at the right place. So if you listen very carefully, you'll actually be able to understand this. Very simple. On October 19, 2002, I went to the animal shelter to get a pet. My mom drove me to Abligmagapi Accra. We met Mr. Maxwell Johnson. He showed me cats, dogs, and rabbits that needed to be adopted. What kind of animal should I get? I noticed a small, fluffy brown dog sitting quietly in the kennel. Wow, I knew that was a dog for me. Mr. Johnson helped the dog out of the kennel, and she ran straight to me. What should I name her? Very simple. Very simple. I'm reading this once so your job is to put all the proper punctuations at the correct places in the correct places sorry that's your job very 
very simple. So I don't want to keep this going. Um, stay safe as usual. And I'll see you in the next video. Um, if you don't understand anything, you can always comment or email. Please send the assignment on time. Please. Bye.